This is Behind the Kick. All right, another night of drums and drumming is here. Welcome back to Behind the Kit. This is Doug Miola. I hope that everyone is having a great night so far. Joe has another amazing show fired up for us tonight. So we received a question from one of our Around the Kit listeners. This one's coming in from Anthony listening in Boston, Massachusetts. Anthony sent me a message and said, I play in a band that does a lot of classic rock. I love the sound of those drummers and their drum sound. I want to know if using a bass drum head without a hole cut in it will give me more of an authentic vintage drum sound. Thanks for listening to Around the Kit and for your question, Anthony. This one is a loaded question, and there are several factors that come into play here. First of all, the drum sound that we hear on the recordings that we're so familiar with was obviously done in the studio. We don't always know exactly what drums, tuning, head selection, miking and production and post-production processes were used in getting the final drum sounds for these recordings. It is safe to say that most of the drum productions on albums made in the 60s and 70s were probably much more raw and less produced, using less mics and post-production tweaking. So when we see a photo of someone like Ian Pace or John Bonham playing live, the kits that they used live may not be the actual kits that they recorded with. That being said, here are some basics to consider. Porting or cutting a hole in your bass drum's resonant head will increase the batter attack that you hear and will shorten the note and cause the drum's resonance to decay more quickly. A non-ported head will allow the drum to resonate more and will give a warmer, round drum sound. Obviously, when we hit a drum, we are causing the air within it to move. That sound pressure produces the drum's tone and sound. When the drum head has a hole in it, the air will escape more quickly, which affects its tone and resonance. Other factors to consider when we are discussing ported and non-ported bass drum heads are, of course, the type of heads themselves that we are using, whether or not we are using any muffling in or on the drum, how the kit is mic'd, the actual size of the drums that we are playing. Smaller kick drums like 18 and 20 inch drums obviously work at a higher frequency so they are a bit easier to control tone wise. Larger bass drums like 24 and 26 inch drums will have lower frequencies and more overtones to work with. Of course tuning preferences, how much muffling or muting you use on the drum will also play a huge part in the overall results that you will get. Some drummers may keep the bass drum resonant head free from holes or ports in them and use internally mounted mics. Generally, I have found that if you gig often and in multiple venues working with different sound technicians every night, having a ported head on your kick drum for miking purposes will probably be the best option for the gigging drummer. You can still tune your drums to the sound that you prefer and you will still be able to get a really nice vintage kick drum sound while making the sound technicians happy when they mic and mix your drums. When you are in the studio and have a more controlled environment, it is easier to experiment with various head choices and drum sound. Hopefully this gives you some solid information to consider regarding porting your bass drum heads. Thanks again to everyone who has contacted us with questions. Anthony, thank you for the question and the message. If you have an inquiry for us at Behind the Kit, please send us an email or a message. We would love to discuss it on the show. You can also reach me on Facebook at Doug Miola's Drum Spot or at my website, DougMiola.com. Thanks again for listening, everyone. Enjoy the rest of tonight's show. Have a great week. Keep on drumming, and I'll see you next week on Behind the Kit.